How's it going everyone? Welcome to another YouTube video. Today we're going to be talking about motherboard BIOS or UEFI settings. And I'm going to try to get to all the useful ones that I can, but a lot of motherboards, depending on which BIOS version you have or what CPU you have, can have different settings in here. So if I do miss yours, leave below in the comment and hopefully I can help you out there. And if you do find something useful, make sure to leave this video a like. But let's get started. So on the main page of your BIOS, after you click delete or F2 when you're booting up your system, you might see an overview window. And this usually has your BIOS version, the amount of RAM in your computer, your CPU, and some other general useful information there. But typically the next tab over or maybe two over, you'll see either says tweaker, advanced, tuner, overclocker, something around those. So we're gonna go over those settings first, the general overclocking settings in your BIOS. And starting here, you might actually see something called spread spectrum. So if you don't know what this is, likely you can just disable it. If it is enabled though, you might see some issues when you are trying to overclock your system as enabling this can help reduce the electromagnetic interference of your device. And typically this is only turned on if you do have some testing that you're running. So unless you're in some kind of lab or doing some very specific electronic testing, you can go ahead and just disable this setting. If it is enabled, disable it because if you are trying to get boosted clocks or overclock, this can actually interfere with that and cause some instability. So somewhere in this page, you'll probably see a big area for CPU frequency multiplier, or just in general, a clock setting box that you can change. And typically it'll be either automatic or it'll be on manual. Now, if you switch this to manual, this is a way you can overclock your system. And this is not gonna be an overclocking guide, but just know that's what that setting is. And you have to be careful when you're changing that because you can crash your computer or possibly even damage some hardware. Most of the time, if you do wanna overclock, go ahead and get a different tool for this. You can use the BIOS setting, but that's gonna be a whole another video, so we're not gonna to go too in depth on how to overclock your system. Just know that's what these settings are and be careful when you mess with them. Now near all this overclocking stuff, you probably do see an extra setting for memory. Typically, the first settings you'll see will all be CPU settings, and below that shortly, or nearby, maybe the next page will be all your memory settings. Now we're gonna look at the main setting you wanna change for your memory, and this is called XMP. It also can be called DOCP or EOCP. This is just based on the manufacturer of your motherboard. Now, Intel created the XMP profile technology, and if they didn't want to play royalties, they had to create their own. So Gigabyte and Asus made their own profiles, but those have kind of died out now, and pretty much everyone is using the XMP technology, and that stands for Extreme Memory Profile. If you did have DOCP or EOCP, it's basically the same exact thing, just copied over in their own little way. But if this is disabled, you're going to want to go ahead and enable that, because that actually gives you the full performance of your memory. So from the manufacturer's side, they've already tested and made sure these memory sticks are stable at these higher clock speeds, and that's typically what they advertise on the box. So if you see your RAM has 3800 megahertz on there, you might actually not be getting all that because you don't have this setting enabled. First, you have to go to your BIOS and click enable because what this does is your BIOS actually takes information off of your RAM stick and imports that into its settings to know what to actually clock the memory to. If it doesn't have that, it's just gonna have a base level which could be a lot lower than what you think you have and actually what you already paid for. So you might as well go ahead, enable this setting and get some free performance. Hold it up just for one second guys, quick little tip here. If you do end up changing anything in your motherboard that you didn't mean to change, go ahead and take out that little battery that's in it, put it back in, that'll reset your CMOS and set everything back to the defaults. And this is just in case you change something crazy and it's not letting you boot up again. Now typically towards the bottom of the page here on your CPU, you'll see something called either FTPM or TPM enable, something with the label TPM in it. Now if you have this option available, I'd recommend enabling it as Windows 11 now requires you to have a TPM 2.0 device. But some CPUs have this actually built into them, but you have to enable it in the BIOS. So make sure to go look for that setting or just Google real quick if your CPU does support this, because if it does, go ahead and enable that and then you'll be all set for Windows 11. I do have another video kind of explaining what a TPM is and why you might need it. And if you do have it, it's more of a guide on how to turn this setting on. So go ahead and check that out. I'll link it below in the description if you wanna know a little bit more about that. Now let's move on to the boot options and your storage options. So you might have a tab up there that says boot. You might wanna have one that says storage. We're gonna kinda of go through these together because they're both about hard drives. So first we're gonna talk about RAID. RAID is redundant array of independent disks. And this is set up Basically, if you wanna set up an array of hard drives for redundancy, for example, RAID 1 mode sets up two of your drives and copies the data between each. So if one of them fails, the other one takes over and no data is actually lost. If you want me to make a dedicated video on RAID and all the settings and modes and what they do, pros and cons, feel free to leave it in the comments and I'll think about adding that to my list. 
Next up on the list is Secure Boot. This helps prevent malware from launching before your operating system by checking a secure key that it shares with your operating system. This ensures that no malicious software can load up and take control of your PC before it's actually booted up into Windows. You might also see something there called Fastboot. Now, Fastboot is really up to you. It's based on your preference if you want this on or off. Obviously it sounds great at first, but just know if you do have Fastboot on, this will skip some regular checks that the system does at the beginning in order to boot up faster. So if you are running into some issues on your computer, I'd recommend keeping this off. It's only gonna save a few seconds anyways if you're using an SSD. Personally, I keep it off, but if you want the faster boot up times, you can toggle it on and off and see how big of a difference it makes, but this will skip some checks that it does in the beginning to make sure your system's all good to go. A quick other little settings here, you might see something called logo under your boot options or beep. And this is literally the beep and the logo that pops up on your computer every time you boot up. So if you don't really feel like hearing that little beep or seeing the logo of the brand of the motherboard you have, you can go ahead and turn those off just to look better, I guess. And the last thing on here, and it's very small, is your password. If you do wanna have a little more secure computer and you're worried about someone getting in and changing settings, you can go ahead and set up a password for your BIOS or UEFI, so that way no one can actually access any of this or change any settings without a password. Thanks again for watching this video, guys. If you liked it, leave a like. Go ahead and subscribe for more content like this. And if you have any ideas or any questions, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. And I'll see you all in the next one.